In this video, we're going to continue talking about combining two shipping containers. Now, the last video, we were combining two 40-foot shipping containers. And while doing that, I expressed a concern about the metal plate that we welded in between these two shipping containers. Yeah, it's going to work pretty well. It's going to hold those two shipping containers together pretty well if you are a good welder to maintain a waterproofing at the connections of these two shipping containers. So let's explore putting a roof on top of these two combined shipping containers so we don't have to worry about the waterproofness of this metal plate. In order to put a roof on there, we're going to frame it. We're going to frame it with two by six trusses and these trusses will need to be connected to the edges of the shipping container. And when we connect them, we don't really want to penetrate through the shipping container any more than we need to. And there are several connections that are available on the market. One of them is from the Simpson Ties Company. Now they have all kinds of ties for trusses and for studs and things of that sort. They don't have really any ties that are designed for shipping containers. So you'll need to talk to your local professional, your architect, your structural engineer, to make sure that you're choosing the right Simpson ties if you want to use their product. Another product you can use is by Domino Clips. And we'll explore that in another video. A third type is a clip that was designed and is big belt by the shipping container guy. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a shout out shipping container guy, but for illustrations purposes, I'm gonna put this uh, clip on this shipping container design in order to hold our trusses made by two by sixes that are 10 foot long, and we'll have some vertical cords that are two by fours. And the clips are going to be along the outside edge, and we're gonna have some on the middle part as well. Now the outside edge is the shipping container guy's clip and the inside is something that I'm just kind of drawing up. It, there are two angles in order to connect the truss end onto this plate that we're welding on the top to connect these two shipping containers. And so then we'll put our trusses on top of the roof and put them in between the clips. And let's look a little bit closer to see how all that looks. And by the way, if you're really serious about designing and building your own shipping container, go to the link down in the description and watch the free 90 minute video that I have prepared for you. And in that video, you're going to learn how to design and build your own shipping container in six steps. Get your copy down below. The previous video was showing this plate along the top and putting our trusses on top allows us to have the roof covering that plate. And by the way, give me a thumbs up and I'd love to hear from you. Give me some comments about what you think about this video and are there any questions do you like for me to answer in any of the future videos? I'm looking forward to reading your comments. Once we put these trusses on top of the shipping container, we're going to have about a two foot eave on either side. Now in this example, I'm going to put siding on the outside of this shipping container. And the siding is going to be a rain screen. And if you're not familiar with rain screen, check out the series of videos I have produced about what a rain screen is and what are the advantages of a rain screen for shipping container buildings? These white items with the black stripe are called InsoFast. It's a really cool product and I'll leave a link down below so you can check more about that. Then we can put a rigid insulation on in between the InsoFast strips and then we'll put more rigid insulation to cover over those InsoFast strips. Then we'll put the siding on top of the Enso fast strips and attach it to those black strips along there. Those, they have a nailer system in there. Then we'll need a soffit. And in the soffit we'll have a trim piece. It's going to have its soffit. It'll have its vent. 
and then we're showing a trim to cover over the connection of the vent and the siding. Then a gutter can be placed on the edge on the trim. Looking from the top view, we can see all these trusses all along the top of the shipping container and in there we can put our bat insulation. Now when you put your bat insulation in there, be sure to keep a distance from the top of the joists or the top of the trusses. Um, this is to allow for the airflow to be able to pass up through the vent in your eave and then along the top of the insulation but below the sheathing and then there'll be a vent probably placed on the ridge, a ridge vent. And your code will also tell you exactly how much of a venting you need from the eave and also from the ridge. Be sure to check your professionals on your area, the, your architect or uh, structural engineer might be able to help you with this. This insulation shown in this example is kind of belt and suspenders because we already have a rigid insulation on the bottom side of the shipping container ceiling. So this should give insulation that one would need in a really cold environment. Then we can put a roofing on top of the, the trusses. The green is showing a sheathing made by the Zip system. Um, great company, I've used those in a lot of my projects. And, but you can use plywood, uh, you know, exterior grade plywood. And then I'm showing an asphalt shingle system on top of the roof. You have a roof over two shipping containers combined and you don't have to worry about how good that weld is as far as water tightness goes. Let me know what you think about this. Leave a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll talk to you on the next video.